I'm going to demonstrate developing skills in constructing the illusion of one point perspective. And then afterwards I'm going to take inspiration from the artist Giorgio de Chirico. What I want is I want to create the illusion of a corridor with doors opening in and doors opening outwards. So what I need to do first is I need to decide where my vanishing point is going to be. Now I won't put that right on any of the sides of the paper, somewhere within the middle. So in from the edges it could be there for instance. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those to the corners of the paper. So here we go. You can use a ruler but I'm just going to do this by sight. Now, this is going to be like the effect of a corridor, so it could go off into infinity, literally to that vanishing point. See how I get on. I'm going to put in a door over here. Now, the side that's one side of the door, and that needs to run parallel to the edges of the paper. And then I'm going to do the nearer side to the door. Again, running parallel to that side, of the, to the sides of the paper. Now, the door's not going right to the top. If this is the ceiling, the door's going to stop slightly short. So what I'm going to do is where that is there, I'm going to take that back to the vanishing point, then come out of a line like that and I might as well just go all the way to the edge so that's the top of the door I could do another one a bit nearer to us along this side of the corridor sides of the door running parallel to the edge of the paper then the top of the door now because this door's nearer than that one it's going to be, the distance there is going to be wider. I'm just guessing. I'm looking at the proportion of that door and I'm trying to sort of imagine it scaled up. So there's another door there. I might just about see the edge of a door here. Okay. Now... One of these doors could open, one of in, into the corridor, another one could open out. So maybe I'll start with this one as opening out of the corridor. So if this is where the door hinges, I could start by putting in the bottom of the door, like that, and then the top of the door. Now I've done those sort of running parallel with the, the the horizontal top and the bottom of the paper. It doesn't have to be. Okay. This door could open in. So I'm going to do that. Coming more towards us this time. Like that. Now, I probably could try and make this look more like a door by thinking of the thickness of the wall above the door, or even the door frame. So, thinking, imagining maybe the thickness of bricks could be like that. Now, I'm going to take that back to the vanishing point and then out. And then it will continue there probably won't need that. I could maybe make a door frame. So another line there, and one above. Now that's going to need to relate back to the vanishing point there. Then come 
down the near side. Okay. Now I could block that out just to try and make it a bit clearer what I'm trying to create the illusion of. A bit of cross hatching in there. There's one of the doors. This one, the door's kind of opening into the corridor, but sort of coming towards us. So I probably need to show the thickness of the, the door frame or the wall. There. And then where it goes. Top of the door frame. A bit of thickness of the, the actual frame. Now not really sure what's happening beyond that door but that's the horizon line now the horizon line is all sorry the vanishing point <laughs> saying it around the wrong way that is described as the vanishing point but it's also where the horizon point line could line up so if I just do a line there then if I block that out then this door I could probably do with showing the thickness of what it's made out of so it's not made of a tiny of a thin piece of paper I'm going to try and suggest that it's made of wood it's got a bit of thickness to it now probably details like a doorknob would be good so if I add those in maybe do that one thinking about the height of those I'm just going to do that actually I wouldn't need that I won't use that line um, the height of that if I draw that line that would be better yeah so that's where the doorknob could be not all that's opening outwards now I can do doors on the other side of this corridor so I'll just add in the verticals so that one I could do a really tiny one so that one's get very thin now the height of that where that the door stops before the ceiling slightly in I do that coming across there up out there that's the first door on this wall. I'll do another one, a bit close to us. So these vertical lines are running parallel to the edges of the page. On the door, then one near to us, like that. So with this one, I wouldn't want the door opening in front of all that that I've already drawn. So I'll do that door, could be towards us, opening like that, not quite interesting. far would that doorknob be up out there I can see the horizon line through that door the, the thickness of the wall or the door frame like that so I'm just going to hatch that section then cross hatch it Thickness.
bits of the door frame or the wood that it's made out of. this door further back that one mm, I'm gonna do it going opening out from the corridor and I'm gonna do it as if it opening really kind of wide open that one so like that I suppose now the, the angle of that, unless I draw another vanishing point, like that, that, that can help because that's that vanishing point is lining um, where the other one is along that horizon line. So that kind of makes sense. How far up the doorknob should be, for that one it probably is on the horizon line, about that. Now, I'm going to do some hatching and cross hatching. That could sort of depict the sky, possibly if it's outside. This, this little one here, maybe that one should open out in rather. Just do that there, slightly in front of the vanishing point, and then a little bit of the sky beyond. Okay, so we've got some doors. Do I need to do anything with that one? Um, possibly, possibly that one could be opening in. opening in it's open wide uh, something like that I guess and then the doorknob like that okay so that's probably me done for doors <coughs> so I'm meant to be taking inspiration from Giorgio de Chirico. So what we'll do is we'll have available for you some examples of de Chirico's work. These are just black and white versions. They would be in colour. But we're looking at these because they use um, single point perspective. So this one in the middle here, we look at all these, whatever that ceiling's made out of in this very bizarre interior they're all going to meet where that is like a picture within a picture really because it's almost like this cityscape beyond um, so we're trying to take a bit of inspiration from that so like here I can see this is a column so if it's like that it's um, there's different types of column that would be an ionic column in like classical architecture and then there's these kind of bizarre constructions and maybe even this idea of there being almost like a picture within a picture like in that one as well it must look like it's a boxed up painting that maybe the artist had already done and it was then going to be delivered this actually looks a little bit like um, the frames that you would make before putting the canvas on the fabric that you stretch over this wooden frame and then paint on. So weirdly these paintings actually seem to be very much about the the structure with which the fabric that they're, paint, that they're painted on hangs on. This is an exterior shot, probably his most famous work is more like this. 
So you could actually decide that, <coughs> do I want this to be outside? Because it could be. You could maybe have this idea that this isn't um, the roof. It could be the sky. So I'll leave that up to you. Maybe the viewer could be wondering if this is inside or outside. So I need to kind of adapt this slightly and add some pieces that kind of reflect that I've looked at De Kirico's work. So what I could do, I could make more of the vanishing point with maybe some floorboards. Like that. about drawing over the door. The viewer will understand what's going on. Um, so with the ceiling, hmm, do I want it to be sky? I mean I could maybe even take inspiration from some of these arches. Could even make extend this further up. So I could maybe put another line from the vanishing point right up to the edge and then this could be arches up here so I could start to add those in so as I get nearer to our viewpoint they're only they're getting taller, they're going to get wider. Like that. In the Kirikos, it's showing the thickness of the wall, so I'll have a go at doing that now. They're so close together near that vanishing point, you're not really going to see much kind of like the lines merge together but trust in the viewer when they look at this to be able to discern what's going on and here we go so maybe what I'll do <coughs> is I'll just hatch like I did in the, the bits that could be the sky Seem to have made a Roman viaduct. With kind of overhead bridges to I don't mean aqueduct. I mean aqueduct, don't I? The overhead sort of bridges that would carry their water the cities I've sort of done that above there um, but maybe there's I could do of adding in this ionic column somehow I'm not totally sure where I'm going to do that I could go lean against the wall perhaps I'll have a go at doing that so I'm sort of copying that bit there that bit similar as in the picture actually. So then the lines here. Now it doesn't show us the base of the column, but I'm going to add that in. Is some like chimneys as well so at the time that um, the Kirikos are making these paintings it's quite a lot of industrial landscapes um, in Italy so I could even think about could I add a chimney in here so maybe in the distance
some smoke. Could almost actually be like a glass roof. Could maybe try and make it look like there's glass panes or something going over there. Um, maybe I could do it as a, a curved, not seen in the De Curico painting, but I haven't seen him all. He might have. Then the central bar like that. maybe subdivide it up again nothing on the ground maybe I should try and clutter it up a bit with things quite like this there's a figure with a, with a hoop, so I could do that maybe, this figure with the hoop, she could come in here, I like this, <coughs> almost like it looks like the base of a, could have a bird bath on top of that. So I might have a go at drawing that in the corridor. Put in some practice of drawing ellipses. Always good to do that. Now I probably need to show some light and shade on that. geometric shapes as well so I might add some of those and, and these wooden frames <coughs> clutter the corridor up I say
it's like a sort of tool or something up here. Might do a hammer. Uh, artistic license. Although it's not in the Dicurico, I kind of interpreted a shape as a hammer. Added a hammer. Maybe something over here. That looks a bit plain. Now there was the cityscape. Could I do like a miniature city over here? Why not? Let's go for it. spend quite a long time doing this get more and more detailed okay so I think I'll just leave the demonstration at that um, but I could add color to that I could add a lot more shading loads more features things going across the sky, a plane across the sky, I've just thought of stars in the sky, who knows, it's going to be your own surreal world, so mixture, surreal, the dreamlike mixed with the illusion of depth, good luck.